Hello, my name is Dr. Robin Kay, and I'm going to talk with you about exploring the benefits and challenges of using wearable technologies for K-12 teachers. And this is a review, a comprehensive review of the literature. I'm going to discuss what is wearable technology, provide you with a bit of background information, discuss the purpose of the study, the methodology, I'll present the results, and some ideas for future research. So what is wearable technology? Well, it is web connected. It's worn on the body, hence the name wearable. It has sensors embedded in the technology and it records neurophysiological or physical data from the body. And this information, this data is collected and will help with self-management or developing a more knowledgeable and aware self. Really, the wearable technology in this case is used to help learning in some way. And we use this neurophysiological data or physical data to guide that learning. So what kind of sensors are we talking about? Well, we could sense heart rate, to look at fitness, skin resistance, to look at emotional state, skin temperature, also to look at emotional state, blood volume, to look at health and fitness again, and respiration, to look at emotional state. So we're looking really at health and fitness and emotional state. That's what we're gathering data from with wearable technologies. Let's provide a few concrete examples can be worn as a watch. This is actually worn on the chest, on the finger, on the inside or the wrist or your fingers. Um, this can be a ring on your nose, on clothing. There could be wearable clothing on your eyes, on your feet. So it can go pretty much anywhere on the body. Now, typically you might think this type of technology is expensive. And it still is relatively costly, but it is more ubiquitous and more affordable. And therefore, research on its use in the classroom is starting to increase. I told you before that really what it is, is these wearable bits of technology, which have sensors that collect data. And the ultimate goal is to create a personal, personalized learning experience. Uh, incorporating your location, uh, your health, and emotional responses. This is relatively new technology, so we thought that a review of the literature on its use in the K-12 context would be quite beneficial. So we're going to look at the benefits and challenges. Now this study incorporated a fairly strict PRISMA framework. Um, used actually in medicine. So it's a rigorous form, framework for collecting information. And it's peer reviewed research from 2003 to 2019. And we basically started with 2000 articles and then worked down to 52 articles. Now keep in mind 42 are from 2000 15 to 2019. So the research is relatively new. Let's look at the results. Uh, uses, health and safety. It's used for health and safety of students, becoming aware, looking at learning and learning outcomes, looking at body movement, environmental monitoring, and something called academic emotions or emotions while learning. So those are the uses that came out. Some of the key benefits included a more holistic view of learning, not just paper and pencil tests, but getting data from students' emotional responses and how focused they are, those kinds of things. Real-time interventions involved at the time. So you have data that's, you're getting data in real time, so you can actually incorporate real-time in interventions, learning in natural situations looking at academic emotions or emotions while you're actually learning and what they mean in terms of learning outcomes and progress and 
increased authenticity while learning. Some functional benefits include hands-free access to information, speech-to-text recognition, pop-up notifications based on the data collected, voice recording, information sharing from the sensors to cloud computing and storing that information, and fitness tracking. So what kind of specific benefits are we talking about? Well, we look information on body data was collected to help understanding learning as a whole. Body data was also collected to help identify difficulties while learning. Learning in different environments and collecting different types of information helped to start to get information about the intersection among learning, teaching, and the environment in which learning occurs. And of course, with sensors and the internet, we have speed, uh, the access to information is uh, sped up. And so you actually get the kind of information, the body information fairly quickly, and then you can look at it to see what it means in terms of learning. There are also engagement related benefits. So using new technology was certainly engaging for students, especially some of these, what you might think of as pretty cool gadgets. Moving outside of the traditional classroom, so learning, look at learning in natural environments with this technology. Self-monitoring, becoming aware of the kind of data that's from your body that's generated, and that can be kind of engaging. And so this is new information about me that I didn't know. Enhanced student-to-student -student interaction and discussions about that information, and a focus on a new form of feedback, effective or feedback that leads to understanding of emotions. There are also challenges experienced when using wearable technologies. So for example, with respect to learning, teachers understanding of how to use this new technology, this wearable device to engage students. Uh, the use of open-ended activities, so there's a lot of data collection or production, uh, for example, with inserting devices into specific art, that kind of thing. So there's constructive kinds of activities. These use of open-ended activities can present a problem for someone that is used to formal instruction. Focusing more deeply on how students learn. So not just their scores, but it can be a challenge now to incorporate all this new information. And using the technology simply because it's cool. So it can be engaging, but does it help learning? One specific challenge involved distraction. So there was a temptation for some students to use wearable technologies to engage in off-task behavior. There was also the potential of that wearable technology used to support cheating. Perhaps a bigger challenge was how the data was used. So this is new kind of data on body reactions and emotions. So teachers can misinterpret what this data actually means. Uh, the datafication of students where they become their data and reducing their individuality could occur. Teachers could rely on software interpretations of data and not their interpretations, and that could be a problem, again, leading to sort of datafication of students and reducing their individuality. Sometimes the student data is compared with the norms, and that can be a problem because students might think they're less or more depending on how they relate to norms. And over identification with the data so that students start to identify with low heart rates and perhaps being too sensitive or something like that where the data should help with learning, not they should not really identify or um, datify, I guess, the students make them the data. Another significant challenge is security, the security of the student data. Who, does, who gets to see that data? 
um, the ethical use of that data, which is related to monitoring of the data by companies. So sometimes companies can say, sure, you can use our, our free technology, but we're going to collect all that student data and perhaps use that data in ways that students didn't intend. And then that can lead to the anonymization of student data or not, or data not being um, anonym, uh, anonym, anonymized. And so uh, you definitely want to figure out what you are going to do with that data. I think the word I was looking for was anonymous, not anonymized. Okay, the final challenge is cost. Uh, well, it may be, this kind of technology may be for more affordable. It's probably not affordable in terms of lar on a large scale um, that would involve a classroom or a school. And accessibility for individual students could be a problem if we expect students to have some of this wearable technology like a smartwatch. Another problem is the cost for training for teachers. Uh, this is new, very new kind of technology, not something you would just pick up and figure out how to use. And entrepreneurial influence, because as I mentioned before, if costs are affordable uh, for this type of technology, that may come at a cost of security and control of data. So what does this review tell us? Well, it tells us that there are inevitable benefits and challenges that we're really in the new phase of using this technology that we probably don't know too much or we don't know too much about the pedagogical benefits. So we need to focus on that more uh, in terms of linking the use of this technology to learning outcomes, limited research has been conducted. We also need to know more about academic emotions. So we can see that there's increased or decreased arousal of students or different kinds of emotions that might come up. But how do those emotions actually affect learning? Related to that is the implicit learning metrics of the body and the kind of information that is collected and how does that information actually relate to learning? So really understanding how the body and its reactions relate to learning. We don't know too much about that. So that's a good area for future research. And finally, we can look at longitudinal learning. So we can collect data naturally over a relatively long time period and then look at that data. So the rate at which emotions change over a year in reaction to learning new things, that can give us a lot of information that we just didn't have before in terms of the impact of learning, engagement, arousal, all, all kinds of longitudinal information that could be helpful in guiding teaching and learning. So that is a review of wearable technologies in K-12 environments.